Welcome to Top Step Funded Trader Interview. I'm Eddie Horn, and today we've got Ephraim with us. This is going to be a special type of funded trader interview. Now, if you remember a while back, Ephraim uh, was interviewed by Danny, and uh, we took a look at his trading. And actually, I was really impressed with what I saw, and I want to make sure that you uh, get a good story, a good tell uh, from Ephraim on his journey through Top Step. But before we start, remember, have your pencil sharpened, make sure there's ink in your pen, because taking notes with this one will definitely be a benefit. So let's start it out. Ephraim, how are you? I'm great. Uh, cannot complain at all. Very nice to have you here. And once again, appreciate you coming on for this second interview. And like I mentioned just a little earlier, I was quite impressed with uh, your run uh, in the funded account. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, before we get on any further, uh, Ephraim, tell us about yourself. Um, I uh, currently live in California. I uh, spent a little time in Nevada last year for, for work. Um, and now I'm back in California and loving uh, SoCal. Orange County is pretty nice. Uh, different uh, atmosphere than I was when I was in Vegas. Um, other than that, just working full time and um, trading on the side until I can get myself in a position to trade full time. Now, let me ask you on the side um, in Vegas, you know, I tell you with the trader mentality, you know, we like to uh, put a little risk on the table once in a while. <laughs> uh, did you venture into any of the casinos? Of course, of course, of, of course. course. Well, you know, sport, sports betting, sports betting is probably my uh, my my outlet. You know, I, I figure if I gamble that way, then I'm not gambling when I'm in the market. There you go. All right. Yeah, see, I've never been to Vegas. I'm afraid to go there, um, clear my bank account out. That's that's my problem. Oh, you have to. It's worth it. <laughs> it's, oh, it is. Okay. All right. I'll take the take your <laughs> word for that. Uh, now, uh, what and who, what or who, I should say, uh, got you interested in trading? Um, I was 19. A gentleman named Pat, he came and stayed at our house uh in Illinois at the time, and he was trading for a company in Chicago, and he uh, was showing me his charts. And I remember being 19 and being so in awe of all these different charts and and being able to follow them and look at them. And you know, he would uh, show me what he was doing, and then give me little projects on the side to figure it out. And I spent the whole summer just following him around, just doing that as he uh, worked out of our house during that time. Like a little trading puppy. Uh, you know, I tell you, um, I myself, uh, my sister was working on the trading floor. She was filling S&Ps. And I tell you, my first day there, I was like, wow, you know, uh, wow, I, I got to be here. <laughs> this is where I belong. And, uh, you know, the, that's how the story goes. What are you trading right now? I only focus on NQ. I'm not trading anything else but NQ. Okay. So you like the speed, the volume. Um, a lot of people Absolutely. are are looking for that NQ. A lot of people are trading that. And uh, I, I do see a lot of, you know, I talk to a lot of traders and sometimes it's just a little too fast for some, but um, from what I saw from your trading, you, you were, you were doing very well. Now in uh, the trading combine, uh, there are rules, there are goals. We have targets. What did the rules and goals in the trading combine help you most? The rules themselves give me an outline to follow. So it keeps me um, it keeps me on target. So you know I have boundaries that I'm not allowed to cross, and and that helps me um, contain um, as well as you know if I'm going down or if I'm going sideways, there's a stop for me to be out at and things like that. So I, I like the rules in the combine. It kind of forces me to behave. Right. It's it, you know they are good guidelines. These are things that you know us as traders put together. Um, you know, what were our bad habits, you know, and we sort of transition those uh, to electronic trading. And um, so far, you know, we we sort of fine tuned some of the rules, change some of the rules, but it is directed to keep you learning, to keep you a better trader and to keep you moving forward. Now, some of the biggest improvements that you have made with your trading, could you share those with us? I think every time you guys add different rules or add different structure. I think understanding why that's done has helped me the most. Uh, for instance, you guys added the, the 20 second, no trade in and out or, uh, you know, holding the position for longer than a certain amount of time. Um, 
I think so often those kind of things can, can establish bad behaviors. So, um, you know, if I can do a quick hit, get in and out, then really am I a successful trader or am I just, you know, grabbing something that's free and easy at that time? So I think adjusting to all the, the different rules, I think is the biggest thing. Yeah. It sometimes turns into a gamer mentality and you're not right. really trading. It's you're, you're quick with the trigger as to, as you're to say the system. Yes. Yes. You're not a trader. And that catches up to you in the long run. It does. We've seen it. And that's why we've, we put it out front, but um, has top step uh, made you a better trader without a doubt. And uh, again, I go back to the rules um, mm -hmm. as a trader, understanding what my boundaries are have helped me. Um, you know, I can, I've, I've had personal accounts where I put five, $10,000 in them. Um, you know, and without the rules, I was able to empty those accounts pretty quickly. Um, you know, I had one account that I put personal money in and it only lasted three days. <laughs> so, you know, given the rules at top step, it, it helps me stay in line and, you know, it has a, I've adapted to being a better trader because of that. It's good to hear. It's very good to hear. What made, what made you stay with top step? I keep saying the same thing, but it, again, the boundaries help me stay in line. I guess you could say I have a gambler's mentality or I had a quick win or a gamer's mentality where it's like, okay, well, let me see how quickly I can game this and get around the system. And every single time those things bit me when I said, okay, well, I don't need top step anymore. Um, you know, they're hindering me or, you know, I'm better than top step. Let me go ahead and start my own thing. But every single time I've done that, I've come back because I've realized that the rules help me become um, the trader that I want to be. Right. And, you know, like I mentioned before, I, uh, you know, was taking a look at your trade report and uh, on the funded account and I kept scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and very consistent. Um, you, you know, your bad days, you limited your bad days very well. Uh, and you rode your good days very well. I saw a lot of really good profitable days uh, with a, you know, lower winning percentage too. So cutting those losers, you know how to do that very well. And that was really impressive to see, uh, you know, that funded account so long. And then how long did you have that one about? I think my first funded account I had mm, about a couple months and then okay. I, um, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go do my own thing. And then I started my own thing. And then I came back and I'm back into another funded account. Now that one that I looked at was, that was, that uh, was long. It was more than a couple months. Very impressive though. Now, uh, Ephraim, I see you had some, some high highs and some, of course, low lows starting out in your current funded account level. Um, how were you able to make adjustments as you went along? Well, I, I think, you know, I put on, I, I spoke with Mick, Mick's been, you know, Mick has that uh, disappointing dad uh, call. So, you, you know, you talk to Mick and he does that disappointing dad call and, and um, having that, you know, coach or having somebody there that's like, Hey, you know, it's time to level down, only do one, only do this, only do that. And, and it's never forced. It's, you have to come to those conclusions on your own. So having those and being able to adjust and understand that like not every trade is going to be a win as much as you want it to be. Um, and you're not going to be, you know, I think being consistent overall is bigger than trying to be the best every single day. Right. And getting that call from the risk manager, uh, it's probably best to listen. And, you know, he's, <laughs> he's not going to misguide you. He's going to tell you, you know, uh, the, the correct way to move and uh, things that you should be doing. So that's good. Now, were there any rules or policies that you kept in mind the most? I think for me, the overall um, knowing that you have the room to, because I'm in the 150,000 account. So understanding that, hey, I'm not allowed to have a loss more than 3,000 a day doesn't mean that I need to actually hit 3,000 in a day. Um, and once I've adjusted my mentality that, hey, maybe I should only be losing a thousand a day or instead. Um, I think that was the biggest adjustment. How about the talking about policies? How about the payout policy? What do you think about the, uh, the payout policy we have? Uh, I was fine with the 80-20. I knew what I was getting myself into. And then it switched to the 90-10. And 
you know, I think I got that email and I, I had a smile from ear to ear um, because I was like, okay, okay, finally, you know, but I think the 90 to 10 is split is great. All right. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, chiming in saying, uh, you know, 90, 10 is great. Top step. What else you got? And, uh, you know, we've got a lot, we've got a lot on that back burner that we're pulling forward. So, uh, you know, second half of 2022, we're going to see a lot more new things coming out now. Uh, Ephraim, the last time you were with us, um, you were getting yourself a Tesla. Now, what's the plan this go around? I think the, the plan this go around is just to be consistent, um, you know, erase the numbers. So you're not focused on, you know, this is my profit. This is what I'm bringing in and just be more focused on the consistency and, you know, if that builds your bank, it builds your bank. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't, but not necessarily focused on, on, on an item. Okay. You know, spread it around a little bit. You know, there's a lot yeah. to watch and uh, keep yourself balanced. How is that Tesla? Did you actually get your Tesla? I did. I'm actually on my third Tesla. Now that first what? Tesla was <laughs> my first Tesla was black and white, had white interior. I called it Oreo. My second Tesla was white on white. I called it vanilla wafer, and now I'm on my third one. Um, and that one's blueberry muffin because it's blue with white interior. But um, I am on my third one. Uh, each one, I had about 50,000 miles on it and got a new one. Awesome. Awesome. Say, I, I tell you, the only electric thing I got is my shaver in the bathroom. That's about it. <laughs> Man, I got to upgrade you. I got I got to upgrade. Right, right, right. Now, of course, we've got a lot of traders out there, and everyone uh, is always looking to continue to grow in this business. What are you hoping to continue to work on most right now? Consistency. I just want to be able to say that I'm a trader, and and I'm not a trader for a short spurt. Like I want to say that I'm a trader, and I think so often, you know, my focus was, oh, well, I did it. I was successful. But was I? Because it was too short, right? So doing it over a year, doing it over two years, doing it over three years is different than doing it for a month, two months, or three months. Right. And, and you know what? You, you, you hit it. You nailed it. Um, consistency. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to preach that. Uh, be consistent because, you know, I, I take a look at a lot of trade reports, and somebody will be consistent for, you know, three days, four days, five days. And all of a sudden that one day sort of knocks them off the horse. And it's, it's, you know, the question is, why do we do that? You know, it's obviously it's human nature, but, you know, if you can stay consistent, if you can manage your account and yourself, uh, you're going to see better success. Last question I always like to throw in here is the fun question. Now, this is something that uh, maybe somebody has asked you before, but I'm going to ask it again and uh, eh, give us your answer for it. Now, the question, fun question is, as a child, Ephraim, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> oh, man, I wanted to fly planes. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an Air Force pilot um, and then... When I realized I didn't have 2020 vision and how that <laughs> kind of derails things until, you know, the LASIK and everything came out. But um, I think as a kid, that's what I wanted more than anything else to do was to fly jets. Fly jets. That's, that sounds pretty good. I was uh, um, 2020 vision. Well, now, you know, I mean, there's a lot of games out there that uh, have that that realistic uh, virtual flying experience. So you have <laughs> absolutely. If you ever wanted to do that, that's about as close as I'd get. That's about as close as I'd get, though. But uh, Ephraim, I really appreciate your time with us. Wish you the best uh, in the future, by all means. And uh, we're all happy to have this opportunity to talk to you once again. And, hey, maybe there will be a third interview. That's if you're up for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. All right. Ephraim, all the best. Any last words? No, thank you, Eddie. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Eddie Horn. Until we meet again, stay positive, stay focused, trade well, and take care.